One of the most vital things to have on a farm is plenty of water. We have to supply our homes, water our animals, and feed our crops. When we bought this land, it was completely raw, no infrastructure whatsoever. So no buildings, no power, no city water, and having the city bring water out here and putting in the infrastructure for that is so expensive. So we've been developing a system to harness the water that already exists on this property in order to solve all these problems and answer these questions of how do we get water out to the pastures and into the forest to feed cows and pigs in the middle of a drought? How do we supply water to our homes forever, hopefully just with the water that we have here? So we've come up with a, an awesome plan to do all of that and have free water for the rest of our lives. Yay! That's a real shower! He's getting some water. Okay, let's start at the very beginning. Uh, so when we were first touring this land, Mason and my dad were exploring up this uh, abandoned road here. It was clear there was a road, but it was very, very shrouded in vines and brush and all kinds of nastiness. It was hard to even walk through altogether. Um, but for whatever reason, the Lord showed Mason where this well was because it was, it was hiding under um, all this brush and, and nastiness. You could barely see it at all, but he found this well and uh, it got us so excited because it, it meant there's water on the land that we could use. And I, I don't think anyone knew that it was here because it wasn't listed on the property listing. Um, the realtor had never mentioned it. I don't, we don't think the owners actually knew. Um, this land had just been used for a hunting property before, so they, they clearly weren't doing anything with this. And like I said, it was so gross over here, no one, you couldn't even see it. So it, it really, I believe it was just the Lord's hand that brought us over here and showed us that there is a spring right here on our own property. One thing that was just really, really cool about finding this is that uh, I had been praying over this scripture for months while we were searching for a property and uh, didn't really have a sp anything specific in mind necessarily, but I'll just read it to you and you'll you'll see. The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land and will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. It's in Isaiah 58, 11. I'd had that scripture posted on my mirror and read it every single day for months while we were searching for a property and just trying to trust the Lord with what was happening next for our family. And uh, when we found this spring, it, it just immediately popped into my head that I'd been praying for months without even realizing it for a spring that whose waters never fail. And it seems like that's what we have here on this land. And so, um, guy. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, Keep going. Okay, I'd been praying. I hadn't realized I'd been praying for months about, I, I, did, Just roll with it. <laughs> I didn't realize I'd been praying for months for a, a spring whose waters never failed. And it looks like that's exactly what we have here on the land. So um, the, it all started here with this well. We ended up not even using this well specifically, but our spring box is right here. And Mason's going to tell you all about that. Right here is where the collection point in the water system is. We've located a source, right? where the well is and deep underground there's a fissure and we're trying to tap into that fissure. So with this uh, structure, it's, a str it's called a spring box, we've dug down and cut into that fissure in order for the water to be released at, at this point deep into the ground. It's about three, four feet deep, so it's not crazy deep. and we've created a little catchment zone with cement blocks. So we've created a, a circle, a circular structure uh, where we've dug deep down under and the water's coming up, up and being contained in this area. And we've used hydraulic cement to seal it so that there's no leaks. And as the water rises, 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 it then is dripped down into the piping that we've put in, down into the sediment tank. So we're collecting it containing it. We've put uh, pea gravel in the bottom of it and I'll show you that real quick. This is, at the moment, this is our makeshift lid <laughs> and eventually we'll make a permanent one. But if you look down here, I'll, I'll grab a few pieces, but we filled it with just little stones in order to collect any sort of sediment that does end up getting into the uh, into the spring box. And the hydraulic cement and the, the bricks that we've laid are gonna do a good job of 
keeping out a lot of the uh, sediment, but it's not a perfect system just to catch any extra. The sediment will just collect onto that, uh, onto the gravel and it's all at the bottom. So as the water rises, comes out this pipe right here. During any sort of rain, there's always gonna be a little bit of overflow. And once the tank down there fills up uh, and this, start, this will start to fill up and we've got an overflow valve in order to make sure that it's not pouring out on top. And <clears throat> that way we can collect nice clean spring water from the source and eliminate any sediment coming into it. Okay, so this is the overflow valve, right? So when it gets a little bit too big. And then this is the pipe that goes all the way down uh, to the sediment tank. So it travels about 50 feet down and uh, in order to get good flow and make sure that uh, we can pump it then back up. Okay, this is the sediment tank. So like I talked about up there with the pea gravel, we wanted to make sure that we collect any sort of dirt or sand or anything that gets in the way of good clean water. And so we've uh, created another separate facility out of a, a, a water tote tank. And we got one of these and filled the bottom also with more pea gravel. So it's just another backup area in order to collect more sediment, making sure our water is as clean as possible. So as it comes through, this piping goes into the tank pea gravel at the bottom and it's filling up once it's in the tank then we come up here and there's a pipe that goes down into it we have got a pump right here and this pump we run we can run up to three times a day and this tank is about 175 gallons so that's how you know how much water we're getting every day uh, just from the spring and it fills up so fast especially when it's raining we could probably run it four or five times a day after the water collects in this tank, we're pumping it out and up to the highest point in the property. We needed a second pump, and I'll show you over here. Uh, I always describe this as, if you've ever had any Hot Wheels, it's like the accelerators that you put on the track that zoom the, the cars through, right? The, this pump was having trouble getting it all the way up because it's, it's quite a bit of elevation change to get up there. We, had, we needed more power. So this is just a, a supplement to that. And then we've got a little pre-filter right here. This will uh, filter out any sort of stuff. Uh, it's not a full filter system. We have a stronger filter up at the top, uh, but this is just kind of a, another step along the way to try to make sure that we have good clean water. Our temporary situation for running the pump, getting power to the pump is a generator runoff propane. And right now we're running it about three times a day, like I said. The long-term plan is to get electricity out here so that we can run some sort of switch where we don't have to come out here and run it ourselves all the time. It'll just turn on when the water in the tank gets low. And that way we can have consistent water pumped to the tank without us having to come and turn it on every once in a while. I'll show you where this pipe leads all the way up the property into the giant water tank. So we had to bring the trencher out here in the woods and clear a lot of this area so that we could trench a deep line uh, for all the water lines through this whole forested area to get it to the water tank. That was quite a job. And originally we had a lot of it just insulated, but we were just worried that freeze would um, take it down or cause issues in the system. So we were, uh, we were bound and determined to get it all buried and we did. So you can see the, the trench in the, in the road here is where the water lines are buried. A tank 8,000 gallons of fresh pure clean spring water and it's all ours
Well, this is the water tank. This supplies all the water to the entire property. Uh, it'll supply water to uh, all the different homes, workshop, and the animals. From here, it gets distributed throughout the rest of the property. This is one of the highest points on the property. Uh, we uh, initially uh, attempted to just use a gravity feed and realized that that wasn't gonna be enough power, enough uh, water pressure, even from 8,000 gallons. We figured it would be enough, but it's not, so we had to uh, improvise. All right, well, we've had some trouble on our way to getting water pressure to our house. Really? That's so unusual for us. <laughs> if you look over here, we've got a UV filter that that the uh, bulbs, the glass bulbs in the freeze, since it wasn't insulated, the glass bulbs broke. And then over here, we've got a pump that we just finally got power to. I mean, that's awesome. But the fact that uh, right when we turn it on, we only got about four hours of use before uh, it didn't work anymore. So that's, you know, that's great. Um, not really, <laughs> but we've got this new pump. Um, and we've also got this bad boy little well tank, pressure tank. I think that's a little bit, I mean, comparison, size comparison for the two, I think that's a little bit better. I think that's gonna work a little bit better. Lucy, what do you think? Um, oh, you think green, I okay. I think green. Said so we're gonna configure this all and, and uh, get it installed. Get it installed, that's nice. the hope. We, we pulled a small pad and then built this little pump house inside. And then we've got our well pump, our jet pump here. Then we've got our pressure tank. You can see where the pressure is on our valve here. This is the pressure we have in our water lines. And then we have a relief uh, spigot there in case we ever need to drain that line. Then that goes into our uh, triple filter system. That cleans any additional sediment and anything that might still be in the lines. Uh, we initially also had a um, uh, an ultraviolet uh, filter that just takes care of bacteria. And yeah, the ultraviolet uh, filters are a really poor design and there there's it involves glass tubes and and things like that we when we had it set up before we had that first hard freeze and it, it everything inside just shattered uh, we ordered replacements and those broke just during installation because they're just garbage uh, the design is set up so that you have to install glass tubes and then glass tubes inside of those tubes which are our ultraviolet lights and uh, and they just uh, it's just a poor design and you put any kind of pressure on it and they just shatter so we didn't really like that much so we we opted out since uh, uh, the testing of our water proved to be uh, pure and clean and 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 bacteria free yeah well you have to protect your 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 water lines and your pumps and everything else that that uh, the whole system goes down. We don't have water anywhere. So uh, we, we built this, uh, this pump house to protect everything. And uh, as you saw before, it's all insulated on the inside. Uh, if we ever have other freezing weather, those uh, lines and the systems involved are gonna be protected. And it's also an escape if we have no other place that's not warm. We can get in here and stay warm. <laughs> just ran underground lines to two temporary electric meter poles okay so we've got one by what will be uh, Laura and my uh, permanent home site then we have a temporary pole electric pole uh, set at the yurt site for Jenny Mason and Lucy and uh, and so we'll, have, we'll run permanent power from there into the yurt once that's built. So right now the temp pole that is for our home site close by, we've run a cord, electrical cord, all the way to 
uh, this building here. You can see it going in. And then we're just running the pump off of that. Getting the water tank upright, that was a challenge. Uh, I, in my uh, infinite wisdom, came up with this engineering design uh, with a fulcrum and, and posts in the ground. And, and, uh, and I was going to pull that thing up uh, with the tractor just lift it right up with this this rack we we our first attempt it just collapsed it wasn't strong enough so we we reinforced it second attempt same thing third attempt same thing we thought we had it figured out and uh it just was not gonna work i the 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 science is is correct but the application just was not uh was not viable so I realized that we had some uh, leftover three inch PVC pipe that I just ripped a trench out of and that made a slot big enough to slide over the end of the blade. And then I can get underneath the tank and then raise that, that uh, uh, bucket up and then move forward and raise it up and move forward again until I could get leverage to shove that thing right up on top of the uh, of the tank ring which is down here which we filled with pea gravel uh, and, it, and it worked beautifully uh, so a lot of a lot of trial and error a lot of disappointment and then finally success and once we headed up we just had to maneuver it into place um, and then shore up the uh, the material underneath to support it and then we were able to hook up all the water lines and and we had uh, we had water set up to the property uh, we've already uh, run water lines to uh, Ginny and Mason and Lucy's permanent home site which is not the yurt site it's around the corner down uh, on the uh, on inlet on the property uh, that's not too far from here so we have water run to all the home site areas uh, and then and to the to the workshop, of course, because we're living there and uh, it's operational now. Now, once uh, our other 10 priority number ones are, are finished, uh, we have a power washer here that we're going to use to clean this tank off. You know, and this is just mildew from being on the other side. The sun is that side. This is the north end. So we're going to get a little mildew here, uh, but nothing gets inside the tank. Um, but what we have to do is power wash this and then we'll, we'll run a, a, meet, uh, a measure of tape down from the top all the way to the bottom and then, uh, and then we're going to paint this whole thing black. Woo! That is a lot of information, so thank you for hanging in there with us. Uh, this water system was a big, big project to develop, and we're still working out the tweaks here and there. Um, but now that we've got it all up and running, no hot shower here on Sunny Willow Farms goes unappreciated. So we are so happy to have gotten to this point, and hope you join us next time, so please don't forget to subscribe.